All right, now we're gonna look at the investigative task, FRQ number six of the 2025 AP statistics uh, exam. If there are any corrections, I will put it in the pinned comment below. So Stefan, a psychologist conducted a study to investigate the effect of time of day and reading comprehension children. 100 children volunteered and their parents with their parents' consent to participate in the study. 50 of the children were randomly assigned to read a story at 9 a.m. Then answered 25 questions about it. Okay, so they volunteered. Uh, the remaining 50 children were assigned to read the same story at 3 p.m. and assigned the same 25 questions. So we randomly split them up. The reading comprehension for each child was measured by reading scores. So this is like an experiment, which determined the number of questions that were answered correctly about the story. Stefan is interested in comparing the mean reading scores for the two times a day. Um, okay, uh, so randomly. Okay, cool. Stefan found the conditions of inference for men conducted a two-sample t-test for the difference in the two populations. Let mu am represent the mean reading score for all children similar to those in the study who would read the story at 9 a.m. Let mu pm represent the mean reading score of all children similar to those in the study who would read the story at 3 p.m. Okay, so randomly, okay, fill 50. So I just went 100. 50 are split into doing the 9 a.m. and then 50 are done the after. Okay, cool. The p-value for Stefan's hypothesis test was 0 0.002. State an appropriate conclusion at the 5% significance level for Stefan's test in the context of the investigation and justify your answer. Okay, so his conclusion here is just really that they're not going to be the same. Like he reject because, um, because, because, so 0 0.002 is less than 5% or 0 0.05 if you want. So there is sufficient evidence. evidence that the mean score, reading score, for um, children who read at 9 a.m. is different than the mean reading score for children who read at 3 p.m. Okay, they're basically saying, we're just saying that this is this is true, okay. I'm trying to see if there's a trick. It seemed kind of straightforward, just making sure you know how to state that. Explain why it was appropriate for Stefan to conduct a two sample t-test for the difference in the two population means instead of a paired t-test for the population mean difference. Okay, because the two, so the, the paired t-test has to do with whether or not it's, they're, they're dependent, like they're connected, like one data point in the, um, for the people who read in the afternoon, is it's not the same kid. So a paired t-test would be more appropriate if it was the same kid reading in the morning and the afternoon. But we say like, well, the two, the big thing is the two, two samples are independent. because um, the kids who read at 9 a.m. were selected independently and randomly from the kids who read at 3 p.m. Right, they're like kind of they're they were separated. There's no connection between the data, right? Each any any there's no pairs of data or anything like that. So, like I said, if you had the same kid read at 9 a.m. and then read at 3 p.m., then then that would be different. Researchers are usually interested in the pr practical importance of the results as well as the statistical significance of the hypothesis test. The practical importance of the results indicates whether or not the observed results are meaningful in re real life. For example, in an investigation of the heights of two groups of children, the difference in the two group means of 3.8 inches is much more meaningful or is more practical importance than the difference of two group means of only 0 0.2 inches. That's very, very fair. One indicator of practical importance is effect size. A common method for measuring the effect size is Cohen's D coefficient. Cohen's D coefficient compares absolute value of the difference in the mean of the two groups to the pooled variability of the observed data values of the two groups. So we're gonna look here versus SP is the pooled standard deviation and mean of the sample size. So we're just doing the, the measured difference divided by what we think the standard deviation is here. When the size of the groups are equal, SP is calculated by this. Okay, um, so they're telling you how to calculate the pool. That's usually in the formula sheet for the pooled sample standard deviation, but they're giving it to you there. Calculate these coefficients for Stefan's study work and show your work. Okay, so you just need to 
kind of calculate all these. So we have X1 bar, like what is the mean for the first sample? And they told us that is uh, 15.9. So one is gonna be, yeah. So we'll just say that's, um, that's gonna be the morning people. So that's gonna be 15.2. And S1 is equal to uh, 4.12. And then X2 bar, this is gonna be the mean, it's gonna be 17.9 and 4.43. Okay, so this D, so first let's calculate the SP. It's gonna be the square root of S1 squared, so 4.12 squared plus 4.43 squared divided by two. You could calculate that separately if you want, and then D is gonna be the absolute value of 15.2 minus 17.9 divided by that value. Like that, okay, so you could calculate that and then divide it in there. Uh, I'm just gonna use, I'm not gonna do it on the T84, it's really annoying to do this thing, so minus 17.9. And then we're gonna divide this by the square root of 4 point, right, divided by two plus 4.43 squared divided by two and I get 0 0.631. Hopefully I did make a calculator error, but that's what I got there. So that's the coefficient I got for CI. And then for number two, higher values of Cohen's D indicate greater practical importance and lower values, less practical importance. Typically we use the intervals here to practical importance. Based on your, describe the practical importance. Well, we got 0 0.631, whatever number you got. If you miscalculated, it's fine, but as long as you just are consistent here, we're in between here. If this is, um, describe the practical importance. So um, the, the measured difference or observed difference in uh, mean scores is somewhat meaningful. In real life. And that's because 0 0.631 is definitely between 0 0.8 and 0 0.2 there. Okay, I don't know, that's probably all I would just say just that it's in between there. And that's the conclusion. And okay, suppose the results of Stefan's study summarize table one is that a standard deviation for the of S1 and standard deviation of S2 were both greater than 4.43. Assume the sample size and the means are not changed. Would the coefficient Ds in the new study be smaller, larger than, or same as the coefficient D? Well, I mean, if they're both greater than that, then you're gonna increase the SP, right? This is kind of like making sure you understand the formula. That, like both of these numbers are gonna get bigger so this number is going to get bigger, and on the denominator is going to get bigger, so the D is going to be less. So I here is going to be um, be smaller then, because um, S1 and S2 in the original sample were less than or equal to 4.43, so increasing them would increase um, SP, and so um, X1 bar minus X2 bar over SP would be smaller. So you're just, this is just sort of a math question, right? Can you just relate that that's gonna get smaller? Does the Cohen's D coefficient described part D indicate the Stefan observed difference in the means in the new situation where more practical importance, less practical, or same practical importance? Um, Let's see, they're both greater than 4.43. Well, what would happen if they were 4.43? So if it was 4.43, um, then we're doing the 15.2 minus the 17.9 divided by the square root of 4.43 squared plus 4. Point. Now, it's not exactly, they didn't say it was 4.43 squared, they just said it was gonna be um, greater than, but this will give us the, the smallest value that we could get. All right, so when I do this on the calculator, 15.2 minus 17.9, and divide that by the square root of, let's see, 4.43 squared. Let's see, I'm gonna get, it's still pretty close. Well, sample sizes and the means haven't changed. Let me double check real quick. I mean, if it's not gonna be a huge shift unless it's like a lot greater, 
like it probably is going to be about the same. It's going to have. I don't know. This is like kind of weird. It's the same practical importance because it's not really going to shift you. You're not going to get down to 0.2 because when I did it, it's 0 0.6. When you go up to 4.43, it's still about 0.6. It shrinks it a little bit. So it'd have to be significantly higher. So it's still going to be about 0 0.6095. So <clears throat> unless the standard uh, deviation increased significantly, significantly significantly more than to 4.43 it's going to have it's the d value will still be greater than 0 0.20 so there's it's about so about the same so still the same practical importance like, I think you could calculate how far you'd have to make it, but you'd, it'd have to be a lot bigger than this, 4.43. It's about greater than that, but like, it'd be a, like a lot greater. You make it big enough, sure. You make this thing big enough, this will be as small as you want it to be, right? So it kind of depends, but assuming it's greater than that, but not like significantly greater, it's not really going to make a huge difference. It would have to be a lot higher. And in fact, I can do the calculation real quick. How high would it have to be? Yeah, I think the standard deviation would have to go up to closer to like 13.5, and that's like a pretty big, that's a pretty big jump. So I would not say that it, it would jump down to this category at all, okay? I think alternatively, after thinking about it a little bit, alternatively, you could say, well, because the D went down, it's lower value, less practical importance. So you could say, because it shrank at all. So this is one way you can answer it. I would accept this answer in this explanation personally. I, I would think that's fine because it's not making a huge difference. However, or you could just say because a lower D value implies that um, it is of less uh, practical importance. Right, you can make that argument as well because they do say in here, they're saying higher values of coins D indicate greater practical importance and it's less practical importance. So because it did go down, it is less practical importance. It's probably they wanted an answer like that, but um, I was basing it off of the table. Honestly, I bet either way, as long as you were just kind of clear in how you explained that, uh, I think it would be fair.